Jesus said, Come unto me, all you who are heavenly laden, and I will give you rest. And those that tune is from a chant, Allah Niyah, which in the Aramaic reflects that. And we may come back to that as a chant. So, good morning, everyone, and welcome to this meditation from the School of Christian Mysticism. And uh, we sit here this morning or listen to this recording at some other time in some other place. But this morning it is uh, the 31st of October. And in the Celtic calendar, this is a, a day of significance. A day which marks a certain pulse point in the rhythm of the year. And it is the last day of autumn and the last day of the year in the Celtic calendar. And tomorrow we start uh, the winter quarter of the year. We come into sowing. And we come into a time of increasing darkness, moving inexorably through the dark, the deepening dark, uh, towards the solstice on the 21st of December. And the way that we celebrate that in the Christian tradition is with Christmas. So I wanted to focus our meditation on this crossing this evening. One of the lovely experiences which I have, but which are troubling to some people and irrelevant to others, is the hollowing out of a, a lovely orange pumpkin and putting a candle in it in the dark on Halloween. And Halloween simply means the evening of the sacred time, the evening of the sacred time, which is the sacred time of winter. And there is something about that hollowing out the hollowing out of self, which we come to in winter. And in this meditation, I would like to offer an attunement to this time, to this sacred time.
the hollowing out allows for a certain space for dreaming and although this is a time when for many people activity in the world increases in the natural world and in the nature within ourselves things come to a rest the seeds which have been sown in the previous year in the year that we're still in today have fallen into the ground and are sleeping and if you like are dreaming what might be Our readings today are the first chapter of, uh, that's in morning prayer this morning, the first chapter of uh, the book of Daniel, and uh, the first chapter of the book of Revelation. And without going into the detail of these, the images are, the, the books are visionary. reminding us that this is a time when we can dream without uh, the need for a focus for our dreaming. And uh, I'd like to offer Uh, this uh, reading from uh, the Four Quartets by T.S. Eliot and Viv gave us this reading uh, some months ago now and it, uh, it called to me today. I said to my soul, be still and let the dark come upon you which shall be the darkness of God. As in a theatre, the lights are extinguished for the scene to be changed with a hollow rumble of wings, with a movement of darkness on darkness. And we know that the hills and the trees, the distant panorama and the bold imposing facade are all being rolled away. Or as when an underground train in the tube stops too long between stations and the conversation rises and slowly fades into silence. And you see behind every face the mental emptiness deepen, leaving only the growing terror of nothing to think about. Or when, under ether, the mind is conscious, but conscious of nothing. I said to my soul, be still and wait without hope. For hope would be hope for the wrong thing. Wait without love, for love would be love of the wrong thing. There is yet faith, but the faith and the love and the hope are all in the waiting. Wait without thought, for you are not ready for thought. So the darkness shall be the light and the stillness the dancing. So I'll read that again as we attune to the growing darkness. I said to my soul, be still and let the dark come upon you, 
and it shall be the darkness of God. As in a theatre, the lights are extinguished for the scene to be changed. With a hollow rumble of wings, with a movement of darkness on darkness, and we know that the hills and the trees, the distant panorama, and a bold, imposing facade are all being rolled away. Or as when an underground train in the tube stops too long between stations and the conversation rises and slowly fades into silence. And you see behind every face the mental emptiness deepen, leaving only the growing terror of nothing to think about. Or when under ether the mind is conscious but conscious of nothing. I said to my soul, be still and wait without hope. For hope would be hope for the wrong thing. Wait without love, for love would be love of the wrong thing. There is yet faith, but the faith and the love and the hope are all in the waiting. Wait without thought, for you are not ready for thought. So the darkness shall be the light and the stillness the dancing. So let us take this piece of this attunement from T.S. Element, T.S. Eliot, into the silence for a period of time now.
Alexander John Shire of Quadratos suggests that Advent began on the 1st of November, the beginning of winter, and goes right through to Christmas. And that makes sense to me as we offer ourselves to this time of year as we give ourselves, as we turn into the dark, into the unknown potential, into the unknown. So let us deepen this experience, breathing out, the known about ourselves and our lives and our expectations and breathing into the dark unknown dark because it is unknown and in potential breathing out the known Letting go of it. Breathing in the unknown. The ways perhaps in which we may serve the divine, the Christ, as yet unrevealed. And the poet Mary Oliver writes, What is there beyond knowing that keeps calling to me? I can't turn in any direction, but it's there. I don't mean the leaves grip and shine, or even the thrush's silk song, but the far-off fires, for example, of the stars, heaven's slowly turning theatre of light or the wind playful with its breath, or time that's always rushing forward, or standing still in the same, what shall I say, moment. What I know I could put into a pack, as if it were bread and cheese, and carry it on one shoulder. Important and honourable, but so small, while everything else continues unexplained and unexplainable. How wonderful it is to follow a thought quietly to its logical end. I have done this a few times, but mostly I just stand in the dark field, in the middle of the world, breathing in and out. Life so far doesn't have any other name but breath, 
and light, wind and rain. If there's a temple, I haven't found it yet. I simply go on drifting in the heaven of the grass and the weeds. What is there beyond knowing that keeps calling to me? I can't turn in any direction, but it's there. I don't mean the leaves grip and shine, or even the thrush's silk song, but the far-off fires, for example, of the stars, heaven's slowly turning theatre of light, or the wind, playful with its breath, or time that's always rushing forward or standing still in the same, what shall I say, moment. What I know I could put into a pack as if it were bread and cheese and carry it on one shoulder, important and honourable, but so small, while everything else continues unexplained and unexplainable. How wonderful it is to follow a thought quietly to its logical end. I have done this a few times, but mostly I just stand in the dark field, in the middle of the world, breathing in and out. Life so far doesn't have any other name but breath, and light, wind, and rain. If there's a temple, I haven't found it yet. I simply go on drifting in the heaven of the grass and the weeds. So let us continue our attunement to standing in the dark field allowing the dark field of ourself to emerge into our consciousness acting with restraint restraining that which we know which we think we know, hollowing out, making space for the unknown of the sacred. Just breathing in and out.
And as we cross this threshold into the winter's dark, we cross through a thin veil, as the Celts would have it when the veils between the worlds are thin. And at this time in the church, we celebrate the festival of all souls and all saints. Those actual ancestors and spiritual ancestors who have been before us. So let us give thanks to them for their lives and their present guidance. And we may be aware of a particular spiritual being who may be Jesus the Christ or Mary Magdalene, Mary the Mother, the Buddha, Muhammad, some being. who will be our guide through this the darkness where the the ghosts and the, the unknown elements of our self may become known to us and ask for us to to be a bit more aware. So we, we ask that now for this being of light to be there as a guide for us through this time now of winter.
And as we step through the veil, this thin veil, we we, we say for ourselves and also for those that have passed over from the Bhagavad Gita. Worn out garments are shed by the body. Worn out bodies are shed by the dweller within the body. New bodies are donned by the dweller like garments, not wounded by weapons, not burned by fire, not dried by the wind, not wetted by water. Such is the one. Not dried, not wetted, not burned, not wounded. Innermost essence, everywhere, always. Being of beings, changeless, eternal, forever and ever. Worn out garments are shed by the body. Worn out bodies are shed by the dweller within the body. New bodies are donned by the dweller like garments. Not wounded by weapons, not burned by fire, not dried by the wind, not wetted by water. Such is the one not dried, not wetted, not burned, not wounded, innermost essence, everywhere, always, being of beings, changeless, eternal, forever and ever. Amen.